Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Cooper was sitting here for literally five minutes. I was waiting to see if he would walk out of frame and go lay on the bed like he usually does, but he just wasn't. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start. And now you go and you lay on the bed, you stinker. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of anti-MLM content. As always, the playlist will be linked right here for you and down below. This is the big playlist with all of my anti-MLM videos on it. We're coming up on 140 videos at this time, which is kind of mind blowing to me. So if that content does interest you, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and liking this video. Those things really help to support the channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Another elephant in the room. I'm clearly sick today. <laughs> I'm going on day five-ish of this head cold. Thankfully, no fever. I didn't test positive for the big C virus or anything like that. I just traveled back to Washington state for the holidays. And I think just the travel and being around people and my immune system is already suppressed right now. I just caught a lovely cold, some sniffles, some sore throat, and now congestion. Super fun. I promise that I feel like 10 times better than I sound. And I'm hoping as we get going and my voice starts to warm up, it won't be as bad. <laughs> but we've got a content schedule to stick to. I have lots of great stories to share with you today, and I'm hoping that my sick voice won't be too much of a distraction. But before we read these stories, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. It's scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks, and the lessons do a great job of preparing you to have practical conversations regarding topics like travel, business, relationships, and more. Babbel is a great tool to have on your side if you're wanting to learn a new language to help you communicate on your travels. Maybe you want to connect with your loved ones in their language. Maybe you're using it for professional development. For me personally, I love that Babbel is helping me stay fresh on my Spanish skills that I started working on a couple years ago in college. I originally started taking Spanish for professional development because I felt that that would really come in handy working in schools. And even though I'm not currently working in schools, that is a door that's open for me at any point in the future. So it's great to have Babbel on my side to really keep those skills fresh. Babbel is the best language learning app for me because the lessons are designed by real language language teachers. And it's really helpful to have that voice recognition technology to help me correct my pronunciation in real time. This holiday season, you can give the gift of a Babbel subscription to open up new worlds of communication for your loved ones, or you can give yourself the gift of Babbel to explore new language for yourself. I had a subscriber once tell me that she gifted herself a Babbel subscription so that she could learn Portuguese to better communicate with her husband and his family in their native language. And I've always thought that was such a sweet and thoughtful thing to do because although you're you're gifting yourself the subscription. You're also gifting your loved ones with the ability to communicate with them. And I think that's really beautiful. If you would like to start learning a new language with Babbel, visit the link in the description box, or you can click the QR code on the screen right here. This is going to get you 60% off your Babbel subscription. Gracias Babbel por patrocinar este video. Now let's read some stories. This story says, hello, Hannah. I really enjoy your videos. Thank you for spreading this life-saving information. Sometimes it could be life-saving, I suppose. Feel free to use my name. My horror story is definitely tame, but these two experiences opened my eyes to the lies and manipulation that can happen right off the bat with an MLM. While the hype has died down over the last year or so, I swear that 2019 and 2020 filled my DMs with hey babe messages from old high school classmates. I knew they were all MLMs, so I just quickly said no thank you to the opportunities and ignored future messages. One of those boss babes, I believe from Unique, very briefly had my attention and participation when she mentioned that I could get a free gift gift if I partnered with her for a week and posted what she sent me on my social media. Who doesn't love free? It seemed like a low stakes commitment, so I said yes. I thought that I would just post information about the company or the products, but what she sent me that first day was a copy and paste blurb where I claim to use their mascara and how much I love it. To this day, I have never used this mascara. I had a brain fart and I posted the blurb and images to my Facebook, even though my gut told me this was weird. Minutes after after posting, I got a number of DMs from family and friends asking if I had been hacked. I explained what the post was about, but these messages confirmed what my gut was trying to tell me. This was wrong. This was not me, and under no circumstances can I compromise my values. I trust friends, family, and certain social media influencers to give me honest and real reviews on products, and I can't contribute to the lies 
guys out there. I sent her a DM telling her that I would not be helping her because it felt very wrong to post that I had used a product when in fact I haven't. She didn't push and accepted what I said. I deleted the Facebook post. A bit after that incident, the same woman posted a picture of her daughter on Facebook. I went to hit the like button, but I noticed the picture came with a giant caption. I read it and the gist was that she knew she wanted and needed to contribute to her family, but did she want to be the tired mom who worked outside of the home and had no time for her kids because of it? Or did she want to be the mom who had her own online business and could work from home with minimal effort and therefore not be tired and be there for her kids? I was livid. I am a working mom and I support my family of four with just my income. My husband is unable to work at this time due to mental health disability. I work as a mental health educator and the coping skills I teach to my clients will always be more valuable than the makeup she tries to sell. To imply that I am not there for my kids because of my job was so hurtful and inaccurate. I give a lot to my kids and family. There is enough mom shaming out there. We don't need it from other moms. It was very easy to see how a mom or parent could be guilted and shamed into joining an MLM under the guise of improving their family and their relationships with their kids. So gross. I left a comment on the post appropriately expressing my anger. I don't hear from this person anymore. Thanks for taking the time to read my story. Keep being awesome. Something really important that your story brings up is the fact that people in MLMs really do rely heavily on this idea that people want to be stay-at-home parents and they want to be a business owner and they want to be able to work from home. And more importantly, it's the undertone that they apply to that, that being a stay-at-home parent or being somebody who works from home is the superior way to go. And I completely agree with what you're saying here that that's not always true for people. Sure, some people desire to be a stay-at-home parent and I think that's great. And some people desire to be a parent who works outside of the home. And I also think that's great. It completely depends on you and your personality and your preferences and your family structure and what's going to be best for you and your kids. And that can look different family to family. And it really does rub me the wrong way when people in MLMs frame it like being a stay at home parent or working from home is the better way to go. And if you do that, you're going to be a better parent because I don't think that's true. If you desire to be a stay at home parent and you desire to be there with your kids 100% of the time, perfect. Love that for you. However, it is worth considering that joining an MLM business opportunity, even though they pitch that to you as the way to be more present for your kids, I think the argument could be made that it has the potential to do the exact opposite. It's been reported to me time and time again that someone was thinking about leaving their full-time job, they wanted to be home with their kids more, they wanted to be a more present parent, and their other job was taking too much time away from their family, but then they joined this MLM, and now, because the majority of the work is now done through technology, technology and social media and your phone and Zoom calls, aka things that you have to be accessible to 100% of the time, that joining the MLM doesn't make you a more present of a parent at all. And what kind of ends up happening is instead of working nine to five, now you're working 24 seven and you are going to be expected to be on Zoom calls on weeknights. You're going to be expected to fill every little pocket of time. I'm doing a lot of air quotes here. (laughs) To fill every little pocket of free time you have in your life with your business opportunity. So now when you're in the school pickup line, you're at your kids' sporting events, at the dinner table, during bedtime routine, on the weekends, all of these things that weren't previously consumed with your typical nine to five job are now consumed with your MLM business opportunity. I feel like I'm belaboring this point a bit and I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. Being a stay-at-home parent is not the best solution for every family and even if it is the best solution for your family, joining an MLM business opportunity is not the best best way to get you there because odds are it's going to be taking up even more of your time than your traditional nine to five job was. So thank you for sending in this story and for providing that perspective because I feel like we don't talk about that enough. This story says, hi Hannah, my name is Megan. I just found your videos this week. It was recommended to me on YouTube after watching courtroom Zoom trials. Interesting. I'm sending my hellos from the MLM capital of the world, Salt Lake City, Utah. In Utah, everyone you know has been a part of an MLM. I can literally go down my friends list on Facebook and name each person that has invited me to everything and anything. With Unique, Young Living Essential Oils, doTERRA, Jamberry Nails, all here in Utah, it's not a shocker. Honestly, the list goes on and on, and that was just a sample. Just Google Utah MLM companies. I believe you. You don't have to convince me. Salt Lake City, Utah is infected by MLM companies, and yes, I agree with you that it feels like everyone who lives anywhere near Salt Lake at least has somebody very close to them in an MLM. 
if they're not in one themselves. I watched a video of yours that was posted about a month ago. It was about a woman who had gone through weight loss surgery and her pictures were stolen by several MLMs. Yes, that was a good one. Well, buckle in because I too am a patient of weight loss surgery and the MLM Pure Romance tried to profit from my weight loss journey. But first, let me tell you how Mary Kay scammed a very young 19 year old me back in 2005. A coworker had approached me about how she had just started selling with Mary Kay and I had known about the company name for a really long time. My grandmother had used their rose lotion and face cream for years. I can't remember the exact details about how I signed up. We're talking 17 years ago, but my upline person took me to her upline's house to order my kit and place my very first order. I do remember the two ladies going over what they would think I would need. And in the end, a very, very young me handed over $600. Why did I do that? I remember leaving this woman's house feeling absolutely sick, but was told by my upline that this was just my nerves and my excitement for the future. A few weeks later, my kit finally came. It had a large signature dusty rose bag, facial kits, samples, everything you needed to start your own business. This is where things got bad. After going through all the foundation colors in my new kit, I noticed everything was a very, very, very dark color. When I popped them open to test it out, one of the bottles literally exploded in my hand. I was left covered in a smelly, rotting, moldy foundation. I contacted my upline right away and she was also in shock. I went through the rest of my items and surprise, they had all expired the year before. I don't remember exactly what followed after this, but after lots of calls, my upline ghosted me. I even called the consultant's line and got nothing. Keep in mind, this was in 2005. Internet sales were not that huge yet with the company and you still had to go to do all your orders on paper and over the phone. I finally gave up and threw everything away. I sold nothing because I had no way to sell it with no product. Yeah, that's really not good. That's a big red flag if the company is sending you expired products in your starter kit. And Mary Kay is one of those inventory-based MLMs where you purchase the product from the company and then it's your responsibility to now resell it for a profit. Some MLMs these days don't have this inventory-based system. You just find a customer and you send them a link to a website and they buy it themselves and have it delivered directly to them, but not Mary Kay and not in 2005. So it sounds like all of your inventory that you were expected to sell came to you expired, rotting, and moldy. And I'm not the least bit surprised that it sounds like there were lots of hoops you would have had to jump through to get any kind of resolution to this and that the company certainly wasn't helpful in refunding you or replacing the items. I probably would have done the same thing, just cut my losses and get the heck out of there. Let's fast forward to 2017 and I was 31. I had gone through weight loss surgery in 2017. I will spare all the details, but this is a very hard road. It is not a decision to take lightly and not a quote, easy way out. I had 24 months of weight check-ins with a nutritionist and a psychologist. Plus, due to massive weight loss of 150 pounds, this led me to having major depression and body dysmorphia, things that I'm still working on. A few months later in 2018, I attended a pure romance party. It was beyond fun and nothing like I had ever attended before. I will have to say that the first red flag was when the consultant made us open our Facebook app and add her as a friend, probably so she could keep tabs on you and follow up with you in the future as somebody that she can pitch to for months or years to come. I fell in love with the friendships and laughter that party brought to my life that night. At the time, my husband and I were on a very tight budget. Just the little amount of money I made at my job went to our household. I couldn't afford to purchase anything, but I promised the consultant of the evening that I would love to purchase something when I was paid later that week. Of course, I fell into the, if you buy the consultant's box, it'll be cheaper. I had zero intentions of selling. Because I had lost a ton of weight, my intimate life was amazing with my husband. And let's be honest, I was more confident. I bought the box and I loved all the spicy items included. The consultant's package at the time was $99. Legit, that was a steal compared to all the crazy expensive items they offer. This is super common for MLM companies to do where the starter kit of products to become a representative or a consultant for the company is heavily, heavily discounted compared to their retail prices. And of course, that's meant to incentivize you to sign up. Even if you have zero 
zero intention of becoming a seller of the products yourself, it is beneficial for that person who convinced you to sign up as a consultant and buy the starter kit. They're gonna get some kind of bonus for that in some form. And then you are also getting the products at a crazy discount. So it's seen as kind of mutually beneficial. What's the harm? But a lot of people find out that now that they have signed up, they did buy the starter kit. They did become a consultant technically. They've kind of unknowingly opened themselves up for the barrage of things that are to come from their upline as far as trying to really convince you to just start selling the product now because you're already a consultant. You already paid for it. Why not? Just join our team calls. Just join our group chats. Just listen in. Just hear about the opportunity. And you've already got one foot in the door by buying the starter kit. You kind of are on the hook already. So now they're really going to try and sink their claws into you and convince you to become an active seller because that's what's going to be the most beneficial for everyone up the pyramid. But then the texts, emails, and Facebook notifications started. My consultant Charlotte started to message me the hour my box was delivered. Being a mom who didn't have very many friends, I mistook this as a friendship. Looking back, this was fake. Everything is fake for them to just make a penny off of you. Even the boxes your product showed up in had your name written on the inside flap with a little message. It said something like, just for Megan, you go boss babe. Of course this made you feel empowered and on top of the world that someone took the time to write your name. Again, I will say that yes, I fell hard into this because of my depression and my deep desire for friendship. I also wanted to make it very clear that my husband was and is amazing. He 100% supported me from the start and he also knew that I craved the friendships and women connection. I started attending the daily Facebook live team events. Yes, daily. I still held firm that I wasn't in this to sell, but again, having major depression, I love the sense of friendship Charlotte was giving me. Here it is, exactly what I was trying to explain before. You already have your foot in the door, so they're really going to try everything in their power to convince you to start selling. One of the daily Zoom calls was Charlotte's upline. Let's call her Amber, mainly because I can't remember her name. She wanted to give all us boss babes a lesson on doing our very best makeup for your parties. Again, I thought this was great, being a mom of four, needing to know how to look my best. I didn't think that the video call was that bad. In the end, I learned some tricks and it did give me a boost of confidence. Until about a week later, I got a DM from Amber asking if I would like to purchase some unique. What? I thought we sold pure romance. So Amber was obviously in multiple MLMs and was using one to promote the other. Other daily videos included how to dress, what shoes to wear, how to stand, specific hand gestures to use, approved language, and best of all, writing out your why story and practicing it. Sneaky, sneaky Amber here being a part of two MLMs, which yes, you can do. It depends on your companies and it depends on their policies, but typically you can join multiple companies if the products those companies offer are different enough and they're not going to be in competition with one another. So in this case, being a part of Unique and Pure Romance, that seems like it would be okay. I haven't read the contracts or anything, but that wouldn't surprise me if she was allowed to be in both, but still very sneaky because you have your Pure Romance group of people and you have your Unique group of people and you can kind of double dip and cross sell to both of them. After about a few weeks, I decided what the hell? I'm going to throw a party and see if I have fun. Being on a tight budget, I found a nice dress and high heels at the thrift store. I practiced setting up my table and then Charlotte made me practice my why story with her. She insisted that my why should include my weight loss and that without pure romance, I would not have the confidence to be who or where I am. <laughs> she also suggested that I tell everyone that I had my surgery after I found pure romance and that I was able to afford it because of them. All 1 million percent not true. She's straight up telling you, just lie. Just make up a story, fabricate all the details to make it look like you have what you have now because of your business opportunity with pure romance. Absolute insanity. My first party was actually fun. No, I did not include the lies in my why story because these people actually knew me and the reasons why I actually lost weight. <laughs> yeah, so you can't really lie to people you personally know, but the fact that she's suggesting that if you come across people you don't know, you can just lie to make the opportunity sound better. Oh my gosh, my head is going to explode. Red flag number 100, Pure Romance insisted that you placed party orders with their app. This was supposed to calculate your tax, sales, inventory if you had it, and enter you into drawings for free products, prizes, and all paid for vacations. Here's the shocker, the app never worked. Prices on products were always incorrect and it would constantly crash in the middle of you making a transaction with a customer. This is why they started 
to push that you have inventory on hand instead. Very interesting. Sure, we can make an app that would make things so easy and convenient for you, but also it would be better for the company if we made these people buy loads of inventory. So maybe we're just not gonna make the app work that well. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what happened in this case. All I'm saying is that it wouldn't be that much of a stretch. One day I received a message from Charlotte telling me that I really needed to have at least $500 of product on me at all times. I told her that there would be no way of doing that since I didn't have the extra money. That's when she suggested getting a credit card of at least $20,000 credit limit. Honestly, that's when I was done. I was in shock that this friend would ever suggest that I put my family into debt. After that, I stopped trying to get parties. I deleted my Pure Romance Facebook party group and I stopped attending the team meetings. Shocker, a few weeks later, I got a DM from Charlotte on Facebook that was not intended for me, but included me and a few other girls that were on the team. It said, quote, Megan would be able to afford that skin removal if she just got off her and did the parties like everyone else. <laughs> I blocked Charlotte on Facebook that day. I closed my Pure Romance online account and threw everything away. Again, Charlotte contacted me through text with a hey hun message. She wanted to know if I was interested in coming back since the fee right now to start up again was free. I sent a text back that I was happy, healthy, and I learned how to block toxic people. You go, Megan, go, Megan. I'm now 36, very happy in my life. I still have a wonderful husband a fantastic career and no MLMs. Thank you for reading my story and thank you for all the wonderful love and support you show us every day. I support you, Megan. I hate to hear that this is the way that things went down and it was just red flag stacked on top of red flag, but I'm a firm believer that people show their true colors at the end of the day and the ulterior motives and the nasty intentions are going to surface at some point. And that sounds like what happened here in this story is just one day you were like, you know what? Enough is enough. I've seen all I need to see. I'm out of here. And good for you for recognizing that and for doing what's best for you and removing yourself from the situation. I think we can all learn from your experience here that we should never buy MLM starter kits, no matter how good the deal is, because <laughs> it's just opening you up to a whole world of things you don't want to be involved in. Sure, it might be a good bargain, it might be a good deal, but it might cost you a lot of your sanity in the long run, so best to just stay away from it. Thank you for sending in this story. This one says, hey Hannah, I've just started watching your video and recently, thanks to this and other channels, I was able to see how many of my family members were involved in a pyramid scheme. Please be patient with me as English is not my first language. I will start this story saying that I'm not very close to my family. I'm relatively low contact. Although we're not on bad terms, we just don't talk over the phone at all. So imagine my surprise when my aunt contacted me out of nowhere. So some information about my aunt. She is a very intelligent and hardworking woman, the type that has been involved with charities and is well known known in her field. I don't take anything she says lightly. She just wasn't the type to be pitched into something sketchy. So of course I listened and I wanted to make it clear that I still hold respect for her to this day. My aunt spoke for about an hour about how she found a perfect feminist way to help each other without any companies or middlemen. That this was an ancient practice brought from Africa where women worked in community sharing resources in a cycle of life type of way. And how an anthropologist learned everything from this tribe and shared it with the West Western world. In this rite, a woman from the tribe was selected to be in the receiving end of the tribe's generosity, and thus is considered to be the receiver of water or be in the water element. This woman gets to receive money and other resources from all the other women in the tribe as a present. The other women in turn are considered to be in the element fire. Once all of the fires provided their gifts, the woman in the water element moves to fire, while the fire element moves to the next element until one one of them gets to be water again and the circle repeats itself. I'm gonna pause right here because I think when we're using the terms of like fire and water and it gets to be a bit confusing, the point that needs to be made very clear right here is what you're describing is a traditional pyramid scheme in the truest sense of the word, okay? Where money is being exchanged and passed around based on recruitment and absolutely nothing else. How much money you make depends on your position within the pyramid. And what this is reminding me of is the gifting table 
table. I'm gonna link a couple articles below about what the gifting table is because it is a traditional four level pyramid scheme. And the different levels or the different ranks are named after different courses in a meal. So the person at the top of the pyramid is called a dessert. The two people under them are called entrees. The four people under them are the soups and salads and the eight people under them are the appetizers. And it's just fancy names for ranks essentially. So the way this works is there's eight people at the bottom rank of appetizer. They each buy into the pyramid scheme for some amount of money, let's say $5,000. So each eight appetizers give the dessert person $5,000. Great, that dessert person now has 40 grand. They take it, they leave. And the idea is that now the people in the bottom of the pyramid are told if you recruit more people under you, make a brand new appetizer level, everyone's gonna move up. And those new appetizers are gonna pay the new desserts. We recruit more appetizers, they pay the desserts. We recruit more appetizers, they pay the desserts. And the cycle continues on like that, never ending. Except it does end. Mathematically, this cannot go on forever. You would exceed the world's population really quickly. I hope I'm doing a good job explaining that. I might not be. It is kind of confusing. But all you need to know is that this gifting table with the courses of the meals, that sounds very similar to what you're describing here about the four elements, earth, water, wind, and fire. They're just fancy names for your position within the pyramid, and the goal is to recruit more people so that you can receive more money. A pyramid scheme in the truest definition of the term. There is nothing being exchanged here. How much money you make depends directly on your position in the pyramid and how many people are underneath you. So back to the story. The Western interpretation of this was at its core the same with a crucial difference. While you started in the fire element, the next two levels were the MLM part. You see, once you pass the fire, then you move to the air element, which requires you to bring two more people to the circle to be the new fires. Once you've recruited your fires, then you can move to earth, where you coach the X fires who are now heirs to get their own fires. Once that is done, you could finally move to water. So essentially looking at it as the blatant pyramid that it is, it looks like this. The top is water and it should be one person, while earth should be two, air should be four, and finally fire should be eight people. Yes, this is exactly the gifting table scenario, just has different names to it. Of course, the way she pitched it to me was beautiful and eloquent, but still my gut feeling was telling me that something wasn't right. I did ask her about the money and who managed it and she said that the money was sent by the fires directly to the water's account and that in the WhatsApp group the water would provide their account or PayPal info so everything was transparent. So of course I asked about the WhatsApp groups and she had only wonders to say about the community of women all around the world that had meetings every single Monday to motivate their group into continuing the circle. And then you put a little red flag emoji. Yes, continuing the circle means recruit more more people so that we can all move up and eventually make our money. Well, I was still not convinced, but I had a lot of questions. So I asked about the cost for fires, which is about 200 US dollars, give or take, which equaled $1,600 for water, which is a lot of money in my country. And that's when I knew I just couldn't be a part of it. It had trouble written all over it, but my curiosity still wasn't satisfied. So I asked if she had ever been in water before. She actually said yes. And this was her third time on the wheel. She explained to me that she actually borrowed the money to participate from someone in the air circle who asked her to return the money only when she reached water, which threw me off since it seemed like a win-win situation for a newcomer. So what's the catch? Before I could think it over, she adds, quote, any news about scamming is not us since we don't have one person managing all the funds. Another red flag. Ultimately, as I said, the idea was just too good to be true even before the red flags. So I politely declined. She didn't push the idea to me directly any further, but she did pitch the idea to my mom who pitched it to my sisters and so on. My aunt actually lent my mother the money, but my mom just couldn't get to water and so the money was lost. At the end, my aunt genuinely believed in the concept, but lost a lot of money in the process of recruiting people. And I couldn't tell you if she's still on the wheel because I haven't heard from her ever since that day. I know this is not a very horrible story, but I do believe there needs to be more information about this scheme. Even though I saw the flags, I never thought I had to warn all my female family members to keep away, but now I know better and warned my mom who thankfully was over it at this point. I want everyone to remember that anything that needs recruiting more people for you to make a profit is a pyramid scheme regardless of how beautiful it sounds. And that's a wonderful conclusion to your whole story because I had never heard about the elements thing, the earth, wind, fire, water. I had heard of the gifting table situation before which is why this started to ring similarities for me and bring up red flags for me. But it sounds like your aunt did a great job of framing it in this beautiful and eloquent way 
way of like, it's women helping women who are all in community with one another and we are gifting each other life-changing amounts of money. And like, it all sounds pretty good. And who's to say, if I hadn't previously heard of this gifting table or I didn't know what a pyramid scheme was, I'd be like, sweet, sounds good, sign me up. And that can be really dangerous because if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And I think your story is really important with how we make the distinction between true classic pyramid schemes and the new evolved MLM companies. Because as you can probably tell, there are a ton of overlapping similarities. Recruitment is the key. The higher up in the pyramid you go, the more money you make. All of those things are still true in an MLM company. However, one of the things that MLMs do to try and keep themselves legal in the eyes of the law is they have a product to sell. So they're saying, well, you're not just buying in for nothing. We're not just shuffling money around here in a scheme. No, no, no. Your money is going towards a physical, tangible product. You're receiving something of value for your money. So that's one of the ways that MLMs try to make themselves legal. But remember that it doesn't always work. There are MLM companies who do sell a product who have still been taken down for being a pyramid scheme. Just because you have a product doesn't mean you're not a pyramid scheme. So having a product is one of the things that MLM companies do to try and protect themselves against being a pyramid scheme. And that's a huge defense that the reps of these companies will rely on. Well, we're not a pyramid scheme. Those are illegal and we actually sell a product. But in my opinion, MLM companies who sell products are just the newer, more evolved, sneakier versions of these traditional pyramid schemes. And a lot of MLM companies fly under the radar for as long as they do because we just don't have the time or legal resources to investigate every single one of these companies in depth and hold them accountable for the fact that they are scamming people out of tons of money. And that's kind of why I'm here. Hello. <laughs> that's kind of why anti-MLM videos exist. That's kind of why there are so many creators making videos on this topic so we can have these discussions and we can get this information out there because we can't rely on the legal system to take down all of these companies. It's just not going to happen. So instead, we have to rely on educating ourselves and making sure that we don't buy into these things and we don't get involved so that hopefully someday the chain of recruitment is going to end and these companies can't survive any longer. So thank you for writing in this story and thanks to everyone who sends a story because you're all individual pieces to this overall picture of trying to get the word out there about the harmful effects of MLM companies and pyramid schemes. This one says, hello, Hannah. First off, thank you very much for everything that you do. Exposing this predatory industry is long overdue. I happened upon your channel a few months ago and I've been hooked. I haven't seen a lot, if any, stories from males. Let me be the first to admit we are not exempt. We are victims and we have horror stories too. The issue with men is that we are too macho to admit when we are wrong. We will go to great lengths just to prove everyone wrong. A perfect combination for a horror story. I don't know if you get a lot of stories from men. If not, let this serve as the inaugural horror story for your channel. I definitely have read stories from men before, but I do not receive them in the quantity that I receive stories from women. I would say it's like 95% women and 5% men who send me stories. And I can only read what I receive. So if you are a guy out there who has a horror story with an MLM company, your voice is just as valuable. Please don't hesitate to send it to me. We know for a fact that the industry of multi-level marketing is female dominated. Women get involved with these things at much higher rates than men do, but it doesn't mean that men don't get involved. They certainly do. And those stories are important too. So thank you for sending this in. Also, please feel free to use my name and forgive me for the long email. Are you ready to hear how I lost $30,000 in a six figure job? Here you go. I lived in the Dallas area for more than 20 years. As you know, metro areas like Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, etc., are hotbeds for MLM recruiting. There are a lot of professionals and with that comes the corporate burnout. I'm no different. I was what you would call a recruiter's dream. If it was presented to me, I signed up. Melaleuca, Noni Juice, Stream Energy, Primerica, and Unicity. My wife was a rep for Mary Kay and I even worked in the corporate office for Excel Communications, which was a long distance provider. Back when you actually had to pay for long distance calls. Today's story is about Unicity International. It's been over eight years and I still remember the moment that I became a rep. To appreciate this story, it's important that I talk about my life and what I was going through at the time. Prior to signing up, I had moved up the ladder very quickly in the corporate office for a well-known dating site. I had been there for about seven years and I was making very, very good money, six figures. When my daughter turned four, she was diagnosed with type one diabetes, which is an autoimmune disorder that attacks the pancreas. Of course, this was very devastating to our family as she would be insulin dependent for the rest of 
her life. Don't worry, she is 15 now and she's a picture of health. The private daycare that she was attending was not allowed to administer her insulin. My wife was in school at the time, so it was up to me to give her the medicine each day. This involved me leaving work, driving an hour to the daycare, giving her a shot of insulin, which took 15 minutes, and then driving back. I did this every working day for two years straight. As you can imagine, it took a toll on me, absolutely. My son was born around that time, and during the first two weeks after birth, he started suffering from seizures. Don't worry, he no longer suffers from seizures, and he is a picture of health. But diabetes, commuting back and forth, doctor's offices, seizures, I was very spent. My wife would always post inspirational pictures and messages about our kids. We had been delivered two big blows and were managing through, but the toll was very evident. You could clearly see our vulnerabilities. Do you see where this is going? Now enters Unicity. A friend of mine who to this day I respect greatly asked me to meet him for coffee. I had been looking at his posts on Facebook and he was having some success with Unicity. I hadn't had any success with previous MLMs, but I was curious as to how he was doing it. Unicity is a health and wellness MLM that helps people manage heart disease, diabetes, and weight. After listening to the presentation, I was all in. After all, I had a story to tell and I could be the perfect spokesperson for the diabetes community. I started putting everyone that I knew in front of my upline. He was very good at presenting and I had signed up about eight people in the first month. His upline took notice and started reaching out to me to provide guidance. This was farther than I had ever made it in any previous MLMs. I thought to myself, this one is actually going to work. I signed my wife at the highest buy-in and that gave me enough points to advance to director. I had finally made it. After all that we had went through with the kids, I saw this as my exit strategy. And yes, I did it. I quit my job. A six-figure salary, bonuses, and benefits. While I was there, I had built up a pretty good nest egg and mapped out a plan. I was pretty confident that leaving corporate America and focusing on this business was the right thing to do. From that point on, everything went downhill. The people that I had signed up did literally nothing. I struggled to make one sale myself and the number of people that participated in my meetings dwindled. My upline and I talked every day day, we tried everything. We even went on a blitz where we would cold call real estate reps and loan officers for six hours straight. I remember being alone in my house and screaming to myself, this sucks. <laughs> Not wanting to lose me as a rep and realizing the sacrifice that I had made, my upline did what most wouldn't do. He pivoted. Rather than focusing on the recruitment side of the business, we decided to build a brand around the product focusing primarily on the diabetes community. This gave me a much needed boost of energy. This was the primary reason for me becoming a rep in the first place. Prior to that, I was beginning to question everything in life and everything that I had lost. First, we needed a name. We decided on blood sugar pros. We assembled a mastermind team that included a nurse and two of my best recruits. We met every Thursday for about nine months. During that time, we mapped out our business strategy for launching our company. We purchased a domain name, a prospecting software, a shopping cart, merchandise, you name it. We even attended a Tony Robbins event to quote, sharpen the ax. And we had a professional video produced to introduce our brand. We paid for and issued press releases. We worked the numbers constantly and me having an accounting background, I provided financial projections. We left no stone unturned. There are a few things that make this a horror story. Number one, I paid for everything. All of the merch, packaging, commercials, photo shoots, websites, backend software, etc. The price tag was well over $30,000. Number two, when you join one of these MLMs, it's important to be a product of the product. I was the only one on our team that had continued with the auto refill. So much for a commitment. Number three, my upline's upline, the one who reached out to me to provide guidance completely abandoned us. Since we weren't focusing on recruiting, he found it necessary to tell us everything that would not work. He had a huge following and if he would have just introduced our project as an alternative to his down line, things probably would have been different, but anything done outside of recruiting is bad for business, so he didn't have time for us. Number four, fast forward to launch date. We were glued to the shopping cart. It was time to reap the benefits of all the hard work, the meetings, and the money spent. We managed to get zero sales on launch date. We were glued to the computer waiting for something, and no one even entered our shopping cart. We received a lot of signups to our free content, but no one was reading it. This was an extreme 
blow to all of us. I was absolutely crushed. I now was faced with the reality that I needed to get back to corporate America. Where are we now? There is a good end to the story. I landed a job for much less pay and worked it for about a year. The dating site that I previously worked for called me back and offered me my position back with a raise, of course. My upline and his wife, the nurse, are also doing very well. The other two members of the team have also recovered and one of them is a very successful real estate agent. As for my upline's upline, to our surprise, he quit Unicity and became a rep of another MLM. He had over 2,000 people in his downline, but it was always odd that only about 10 to 20 would attend his weekly calls. No wonder he quit. I think I was extremely lucky. Our goal was to bring a level of professionalism and dignity to what we were doing. We stopped badgering our friends and became business owners, so we thought. With MLMs, if you focus on the product, then you are doomed. Products are so overpriced that no one will ever buy from you. We learned that the hard way. All I have to say is never again. (laughs) Hopefully my story can provide a little inspiration to someone, especially men who are beating their heads against a brick wall, carrying their ego and losing money at the same time. Please keep doing what you're doing. So if I'm clear on your story, you were coming up with this whole strategy and plan to market and sell Unicity products. There were a couple points in the story where I wasn't sure if you were starting your own product line with your own company and like totally separating yourself from Unicity. But what I think it sounds like is you just realized that the recruiting wasn't working anymore. It worked temporarily right in the beginning, but that wasn't sustainable. So now you're focusing all of your energy on selling the products and creating this business plan for how to do that. But at the end of the day, it was all one huge flop. And the moral to that story, as you said, is the moment you start focusing on selling the product instead of recruiting other people into the business, that's where things really start to go downhill. And it sounds like you really had to learn that the super, super hard way. After you left your very stable job, you invested $30,000 and it still didn't work out. And it's not like you can say that you just didn't work hard enough. You can't say that you just didn't want it bad enough. You can't say that you just didn't stick it out long enough because you did all those things. It sounds like you gave it your heart and soul for nearly a year and it still didn't work out. And what does that say about the opportunity? That it's all about recruiting. And you saw your highest levels of success when it was all about recruiting, but that's not what's sustainable either. MLM companies are like really delicate houses of cards. I can just imagine that it feels like you're walking on thin ice 100% of the time and at any moment, everything can come crashing down and crumble beneath you. And unfortunately in this case it did, but I am happy to see that you were able to get your old job back. I feel like that's something a lot of people wouldn't get to do and I'm really happy that that is your case. And I wanna say thank you again for sending in your story from a male's perspective, because as you mentioned, it's not one that we get to hear from a lot, so thank you for doing that. This story says, hi Hannah, my name is blank, but please refer to me as Marie. My mom, Anne, owns a small business, a true small business. She is a chef and has a successful in-home restaurant with my stepdad, they are both chefs. My family came to the States from the Middle East and my mom worked very hard to get what she has now. My mom isn't always aware of scams or people who use others, so I've always been the one to point things out to her when something is sketchy. This was one of those times. My mom is a member of the local chamber of commerce in her area, you know, because she is a true small business. There, she meets lots of like-minded people and she makes friends. One night, a lady who, quote, owns a makeup company came up to her and asked her if she wanted to have dinner with other small business owners from the chamber. This lady, I don't remember her name, so I will call her Kay, told my mom that she could bring anyone she wanted to this dinner. My mom chose me and I agreed to go. I helped my parents with all the advertising, menu making, client communication, etc. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to help her. We get to the restaurant and Kay had reserved the entire back half just past the bar. We saw foldable tables and displays all along the back wall. I instantly knew what was happening, but my mom did not. As soon as we sat down for dinner, the presentation started. There was a Mary Kay rep who was Kay, the host, doTERRA, Color Street, LuLaRoe, Pharmacy, about 10 different MLM reps all sat at this table. And then there was me and my mom. There were drawings and contests throughout the night. These ladies were given 
giving their pitches, but I was not taking them in. My mom was interested in the Color Street nail strips, and I had to find a way to convince her not to buy. I think this might be the first story where I've heard of multiple MLM reps from multiple companies all gathering together <laughs> to pitch each other. <laughs> it sounds like you and your mom are the only people here who are not affiliated with an MLM company. Your mom has her own actual small business, but this is kind of weird, is it not? Like, let me pitch you my doTERRA oils and I'll listen to your LuLaRoe pitch too. What's the deal here? Like, what's the purpose? Are they all expected to buy from one another? This is very bizarre. I don't think I've ever heard of this before. The lady next to me brought along her 15 year old daughter for companionship and I ended up sitting next to the daughter. The daughter was more my age than these ladies. I was 26 at the time. The mom was trying to pitch me her company. I can't remember which one it was, but I was not having it. I told her, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I already have a career. She asked me what my career was and told me right in front of her daughter that her company will pay me more than I could imagine making in a nine to five. I told her that I'm a senior litigation paralegal and I highly doubt that her company would pay me more than I was making. She tried to circle around me with the benefits and how I wouldn't need my career and don't I want to stay home and raise a family? No, actually, I don't. I could not believe that this woman was trying to bash my career, which I worked very hard for, right in front of her young and impressionable daughter. What made it even more embarrassing was that a group of my friends ended up sitting at the bar and sat forward facing me and this giant MLM party. I went up to them to talk and I wanted so bad to explain that I was not aware of what I had walked into. The whole night was playing games like dice and card games at these tables during this presentation. The winner of the games would win gift baskets compiled by these MLM huns. Kay is a Mary Kay hun and I was the winner of the game where her basket had free samples. I politely declined and said that I wasn't here for the gifts. I was here to help my mom with her business and network with the locals. She told me to take the basket and her card to which I again declined and said that the only makeup I wear is mascara. So once again, I'm not interested. Again, what is the point of this party? Why are we at a bar all together? Why are we playing card games? Why are we giving out baskets of samples? There has to be an ulterior motive. There has to be a reason that all of these MLM huns would gather together to play games and give each other samples. Like what is the point? I'm confused. Fast forward two years and my boyfriend and I moved into a house in the hills in this gorgeous gated community. How did I ever afford this without being a part of her MLM? <laughs> I needed a washer and dryer set and I was looking at used ones. My mom told me that her friend Kay had a set for sale for $400. My mom reached out and offered to buy it. Kay said yes. My mom then mentions that the set was for me and then Kay said no. I was back at the beginning on the Facebook marketplace all because I rejected a hun. That that's kind of a funny conclusion. Like, was she holding a grudge against you for all these years that you didn't take her samples and now she's not gonna sell her washer and dryer to you? Oh my gosh, ridiculous. Again, I'm still confused on what the heck this event was and I'm sorry that you had to put yourself through that. I would wanna be one of your friends sitting at the bar watching all this happen from the outside. I think that would be very entertaining. But if anybody has any ideas on what this event was for and why it was hosted, please let me know. <laughs> but how petty that the Mary Kay is holding this grudge over you for multiple years and she's refusing to sell you her washer and dryer because you wouldn't participate in her little games at her little party. <laughs> And with that, my friends, it's all the stories I have for you for this MLM Horror Stories video. If you stuck it out with me this whole time listening to my highly irritating nasally voice today, you are so appreciated. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking around. As always, if you have your own horror stories you would like for me to consider for a video, please send them my way. The instructions for how to do that are in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.